Hello my friends and welcome to Searching and Fearless Tarot. Today's topic is going to be Mars and Scorpio. What the fuck does that mean for us? What different messages are going to be coming up for the collective? Um, and uh, yeah, just a general how you doing and what you're going to go through um, in this Mars and Scorpio. So keep in mind I'm reading for a lot of people. So there's a lot, dot, a lot of different possibilities um, that I'm going to be reading for. So if not everything in the messages that I give you fits perfectly with, or aligns with your situation, keep in mind that there are other people out there. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, so I wanted to go into Mars and Scorpio first a little bit. So with Mars and Scorpio, Mars is the energy of war. It's the energy to endure anything. It's the energy that is going to move us through and get us to where we need to go um, in, in action, right? So with Mars and Scorpio, it's an interesting placement because it's more of a placement of having to go into the deepest depths of yourself to trans transform, to transmute, to change, right? So a lot in this time, a lot of us could be feeling, um, depending on where your Mars is. So uh, I'll give you a personal example. Mars is in my seventh house. Seventh house is the house of partnerships. It's how we react or it, how we react, how we interact with partnerships, how we interact with the world, right? And you would suppose that Mars would be a pretty shitty placement for seventh house, right? And I'm not going to lie to you. It's been a trial and a tribulation in my 33 years on this earth, but with Mars in the seventh house, it's also given me the tenacity to leave relationships when I needed to leave relationships or when it was best for me. Um, it's also given me the endurance through different interactions with people to understand what I want and what I need because what I want and I, what I need in a partner is very different than what a lot of other people need. I'm a Gemini Venus. So I look at partnerships more intellectually than romantically. I know that sounds kind of weird, but what I mean is someone's, um, I'm very realistic about my expectations with other partners. And I haven't always been honest about that. Um, like I've not ever really been the type of person that's like, I'm gonna marry this person forever and we're gonna have kids and we're gonna go off into the sunset. That's never really been my prerogative <clears throat> in life. Um, I am attracted to many of the people around me and I love their mind. I love their way, the way that they communicate with me, um, the facts that they get across or new information that they, we can discuss, you know, that's the type of love that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for like an all encompassing. I only want to be with you for the rest of my life. Gemini is the energy of dispersing information. So for me, that being in my Venus, it's more likely for me to want to disperse information and to be with all different kinds of people to figure out what their jive is. And yeah, so it's just, it's not really the best placement in the world, but it is what it is. And it's taken me a long time to accept it. But with the Mars energy in there, it's it's given me strategy. It's It's given me an understanding of where I need to go from here. So with Mars and Scorpio, a lot of the issues that I could possibly face with it being in my seventh house is issues of partnerships, issues of being with the other person. Um, what are my motives when I have a partnership? Am I solely looking for selfish greed or am I looking to actually be interdependent with that other partner and to live life with them as a, almost a teammate and a best friend and a partner? That's, that's what I'm looking for, but I've struggled with that through the years. And I've also struggled with myself, um, my self image. Um, and it's been very difficult for me to actually trust that I will find somebody that I connect with throughout life. And so a lot of times people who are connected to me, I will just <clears throat> automatically go into a relationship with them because I haven't ever felt any better about myself. Now that's not to say that those people in my life weren't important individuals that needed to come into my life and karmic partners or soulmates in some way, shape or form that were there to teach me something. But at the same time, it's incredibly painful to go through such different stories when what the world projects onto me is a storybook ending and a storybook ending never fit my prerogative and being in society and having that hunky-dory marriage relationship has never been my number one goal. It's a great additive to my life, but it's it's not my number one priority in life. 
<clears throat> and that's been very hard for me to accept and face. And I've had to surrender that in a lot of ways because I felt like a bad person for feeling that way. I felt like I was wrong. And the only thing that was wrong was me lying to myself and continuing these relationships with other people to where they think I want the same thing that they do. And so I have to surrender into that in this time period and face the consequences of me not being true to myself and not being true to the other person. Even though I very, I had very limited information at the time and I did it out of fear, it doesn't matter. I need to take this time to forgive myself for what's happened in prior relationships and hope to have a better outcome in the future because I'm actually starting from a point of honesty and truth instead of starting from a point that I thought society wanted me to start at. So sorry, I know that was a really long explanation, but <clears throat> That's the best way that I can really put this into words is this time is going to be an area where you feel like you have sacrificed or surrendered or needed to change something. And really what this time is helping you to do is change your perspective so that you can withstand whatever trials and tribulations are on your way to your goal, your, your life goal, how you want to live your life, you know? So anyways... <clears throat> I hope all of that made sense and I know personal experience is kind of weird to share out there but I'm just gonna do it because it's a very it, it hits on the nose for me this season it does and even though I've I found clarity and answers in other areas of my life I still still have to take the time to forgive myself and be compassionate with myself for all the mistakes that I didn't know and that I did so um that's that here we're gonna get into messages of mars and scorpio father god holy spirit let's get a prayer father god holy spirit thank you so much for another day not promised thank you for all the love guidance and wisdom you share with us we are nothing without it or you what energies are we going through with this mars and scorpio season so it starts on the 30th of october and it ends december 12th i believe um, some of you I'm getting like really pressure on the top of my head. Some of you could be getting headaches right now. Um, some of you could be coming into your intuitive, excuse me, intuitive gifts at this time. So a lot of what that pressure, um, if you're, if you're wondering if your body is like, if you have an itchy nose all the time, or if your ear is ringing on one side, or if you feel a pressure on the top of your head, look up body symbology. Um, body symbology is going to help you to understand what your body is trying to signal to you. Because if you, um, I don't know all of them perfectly, but I know that um, on the right, I know that on the right ear and the left ear means something. I know that itching your nose means that someone's talking about you. I know that an itchy palm on the left side means that money's coming in. An itchy palm on the right side means, um, but that's body symbology. I'm just giving you exactly what it is. Anyways, please only help me connect to those that have the highest in mind for all involved. Okay. <clears throat> Fifth house in the sun. Interesting. Okay. So. Fifth house and the sun. What does that have to do with Mars in Scorpio? Fifth house and sun. Um, a lot of you are dealing with, uh, damn it. Well, here we go into relationships again. <laughs> a lot of you have been, um, have been either hiding away from somebody or keeping something from somebody after a breakup. Um, and you're wanting to express that same thing that you've been hiding for a while. Um, some of you have are going through breakups and you're trying to find your passions and you're following your new ideas and your curiosity. For some of you, it's to find answers. And for those of you on the other end of the spectrum who were broken up with, um, you feel that someone has been selfish and keeping you in waiting, possibly keeping secrets from you. Um, maybe you guys still interact on, on a daily or a weekly basis. 
but it's a very surface level interaction with this person. I'm seeing the lovers reversed in the Knight of Wands and the Page of Swords, which is a good thing. A lot of you, if you're either if you're on, on either side of the coin, the person that ghosted you or the person that stopped talking to you or stopped talking to you in an intimate way wants to express themselves, has something that they want to communicate with you. And mind you, keep in mind, Scorpio is the underworld. Scorpio is transformation. So death and secrets and lies and all that is completely falling into line with what's going on. Um, with fifth house and the sun being the title though, I'm feeling like a lot of you are trying to find your happiness. Some of you could be going after new hobbies or projects, um, trying to spend your time in a more productive way than feeling resentful towards the other person. This could also be family as well. Um, a lot of you feel stuck in time. Um, you could have made great progress um, between now and 2020, but you feel like you're just kind of in this neutral position at, at this point. Um, some of you with the Nine of Cups and the Devil could be drinking or smoking to um, to take away some of the pain that's happened to you in this in this relationship that didn't work. Um, but that's what's keeping you stagnant and making you feel stagnant. So a lot of you are working your way out of that or trying to not be so dependent on, um, dependent on things that are going to distract you, basically. Okay, so I'm getting the King of Cups reversed, the Three of Cups reversed, and the Seven of Swords reversed. <sighs> Please clarify the King of Cups. Please clarify the Seven of Swords reversed. Oh shit. Okay. Um, I'm truly feeling like this person, it could be a family or friend, it doesn't have to be a romantic partner, guys. I really feel like this person is starting to get clarity over what happened. What happened to make the relationship end. Um, some of them want to apologize. Other that, others of them feel like they can't move forward until they apologize. Or not even just apology, but some, some clarity moving forward. I feel like when this relationship ended, someone got the wrong idea. And I think, I think through time, there's been clarity. And I honestly, I mean, I'm not the kind of person that's like, oh, take your, take your ex back or your ex wants you back. Or, um, if I see that in the reading, I will, I will tell you that, but that's not what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing is someone who is stagnant, um, and who needs to bring out a secret. That's what I'm feeling here. And really, like, I feel like the reason why they haven't brought out the secret is not because either person is evil or any shit like that. I think that this person hasn't brought out their truth. Because I think, ironically, when the two people... <clears throat> the relationship I'm feeling here is the two people... It wasn't... <laughs> the two people that were in the relationship were trying to live by society's means. And I think one person d dipped before the other, but both of them had secrets and both of them were not meant to live a life of ordinary marriage, nine to five, two and a half kids, white picket fence. Or maybe they weren't meant to live that truth with that partner. And maybe with the Empress reversed here, there are kids involved or there's a house involved or there are grown up decisions that need to be made. And I think that there's hurt and there's there's fear coming from this. And overwhelm. With the Empress reversed, with the Empress reversed, it's like this doesn't necessarily mean it's a mom that's in distress. Okay, the Empress reversed can be the divine feminine energy 
having trouble coming to light, okay? So masculine energy is all about action. It's all about moving forward into the sunlight, right? But I feel like this person has struggled with this secret or struggled with this breakup because it's not like they don't love the person. It's not like they don't still have kind thoughts or feelings towards this person. I think that it just didn't work out. And there's sadness there. Oh, oops. I'm gonna keep going. Some of you, when the relationship ended, there was a lot of bitterness or resent, resentfulness or because of the chaos of the actual breakup or the shock of the actual breakup. Um, someone could have been unfair when it came to splitting of the things, the physical things or the money things. And I think this person has an understanding that the way that they did you was dirty. And maybe they want to give something to you or share something with you. Um, I also feel like if you're the person that's been manifesting money or you were the one that got kind of screwed over when it came to financial endeavors after this breakup, um, I do feel like you, you manifested this back. You manifested this money back or this development. Or some of you are feeling like your your life isn't going to move forward and you're not gonna find an opportunity until you create reciprocity with the other person. The longer that you stay in this restless, frustrated, resentful energy, the longer you're going to keep feeling restless and burnt out and impulsive and making decisions that aren't really for your highest good. The longer that you stay in this instability feeling and in this feeling of um, I'm not good enough or that person's a, a betrayer or a homewrecker or whatever, the longer that you choose to stay in this energy and not clearly take a look at it, like for those of you in the program, I would recommend a four step on this. For sure. I would recommend a four step on this person. And what, what do I mean when I say a four step for those of you that aren't in the program? Basically, a four step is when we write down the person, people that we're resentful at, and we, we actually articulate what areas of our life we felt that they affected. And then we have to come to a center, okay? to get rid of the resentments because I swear if you only have even if you only have one resentment it's going to paint your entire perspective it's going to paint your world and change things and that's why this Scorpio season is happening so if you're if you're having a lot of thoughts that are just circling around over and over again and you're feeling like you need to move forward but you're scared I would really recommend moving forward because it's going to help you a lot it's gonna help you be able to give the compassion to yourself that you need, and it's going to be able to help you walk away from this lost opportunity and to recognize it for the lesson that it was. Instead of constantly feeling frozen in time and resentful towards the other person. Because King of Cups reverse doesn't always, and so, some of you, the partner could be a water sign, what, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I know I'm horrible at giving out signs, but um, King of Cups doesn't always have to be reverse doesn't always have to be someone who's manipulative or moody this could also be someone who's giving themselves the proper self-compassion that they need at this time and maybe distancing themselves from other people that aren't in their highest good you're getting through it though <clears throat> what is this please clarify the six of wands reversed. A lot of you, I'm begging you, this resentment needs to be, 
There are expectations that need to be looked at from either side of this, but it's the expectations that constantly let you down. And I think that that's where the frustration and the tension come in. Keep the, keep the expectations at a minimum and just take everything as it is, okay? Trust what you see, trust what's in front of you, trust the situation. And if you're feeling like you need to make amends with somebody or you're feeling like someone, I, if you're not the person that needs to make amends, if you're not the person that has been either ghosting this other person or not giving this person clarity, I feel like this person is going to come in and give you an amends. It's not going to be the rainbow and butterflies that you're looking for. It's not going to be this like, oh my God, everything is wonderful now that we've had clarity. But it gives you a, it gives all of the old bullshit that happened a place to die and a place to expand in that relation, in that relationship with that person. So what I mean when I say that is if you share children, if you share pets, if you share a house, if you're having to consistently see each other for a reason other than yourselves, okay, what the goal is, isn't that you guys become instant besties or that this all changes dramatically. The goal is for the relationship to evolve. And the goal is for you to get to a place where you feel calm enough that you can hang in there and you're not constantly going to feel anxious that it's what what you to make a mistake or for the other person to make a mistake. I'm hoping this is all making sense. Okay. I'm going to pull some life purpose cards to see what you guys can do creatively. But really, I think what this what this Mars transit is doing is helping you to read the subtleties, read between the lines of what's going on to really make it more harmonious, make it make it to a space where you both can live prosperous lives without feeling one way about it. Family and children. Are you kidding me, dude? <sighs> That's the focus. That's the focus right now. That's your key. That's your key. Is to focus on what legacy you want to leave. To focus on um, the interconnected relationships and how to either fix them or forgive yourself for whatever happened previously. Or forgive the other person. Uh, okay. Let's do some guidance cards and then I'm out of here. I'll do one for each element. Let's do one for fire. Sagittarius, Leo, Aries. What do they need to know? Sagittarius, Leo, Aries. What do they need to know? Peace. Ooh, I like that. 23. Okay. Aries Leo Sag, it doesn't get any better than this. A quiet mind, a heart fulfilled, freedom from want, and a soul satisfaction. The way to peace is through radical acceptance. Everything in your world is exactly as it should be. Harmony is beautiful. Enjoy it. This is one of those times when you're capable of clear vision about your work and how you create pro your prosperity. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. You're called by a presence to step into your power. Just being is enough. For you are in a peaceful harmony with spirit and it shows in your work. Ooh, I like that. Okay, Earth. Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. What do they need to do? Imagine. Ooh, I like the cards that are coming out today, guys. Damn. Damn. Okay, Capricorn Virgo Taurus, what do you want to be? What do you need to believe in order to have the life you want? You were gifted with the powers, the power to imagine. 
If you can dream it, you can create it. This is the time when your imagination is the key to manifesting the life you desire. Spend time daydreaming, fashioning a vision board to help you see your goals, or meditating. Allow the power of your creativity to deliver messages of what feeds your soul. Then allow your feelings to mingle with your inspirations and imagine these feelings being real right now. Then repeat. What you imagine will become your belief, and soon you will see that these things come to pass in the outer world, as if by magic. Okay, water. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. What do y'all need to know? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. What do they need to know for Mars and Scorpio? Milk and honey, 51. I love these cards, man. Okay. Cancer Pisces Scorpio, you've entered a sweet time in your life, enjoying the land of milk and honey that everyone wants to experience. It's an interlude that feels more languid than ambitious when all your senses are awake to the unlimited possibilities in the universe. These times are precious and only come when you're in, a, in your authentic zone. Wearing the world as a loose garment, not wanting yet able to be nourished in ways both tangible and subtle. Abundance is an energy that you are living part of. All your needs are being met. You are given the gift of nourishment in every form. There is one, only one authentic you. This version of yourself is spirit's emissary in the world. When you're in alignment with the truth that you are a unique expression of the divine, your ego can rest and your soul can illuminate your purpose. Now is the time when you're seeking your true north. When you find this direction, you automatically step into prosperity and the world brings you evidence of abundance. Miracles are a choice and a way of seeing the world. With every choice you make right now, you have the potential to seize good fortune and embrace your destiny. Opportunities will lead you to your best life now. Be open to them. You're getting a sweet taste of what you want. Okay. And air. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Flexible. In the protection position. <sighs> okay. Gemini, Aquarius, Libra. When you or someone else becomes too rigid, you lose the access to growth and untapped potential and find yourself in an us versus them scenario. Loosen up, open your mind and heart and see if a more flexible approach feels better. Rigidity will set you up for a fight where there are only losers and no winners. Could you find a way to bring about a result that is mutually beneficial? Meet in the middle. Spirit makes a great mediator. Okay. I love all of you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful season and uh, I'll see